Hi there, welcome friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Homekeeper. So glad you're here today. And I just hope you'll just grab a cup of tea or whatever your beverage of choice is and uh, stay with us for the next few minutes. Have you ever seen us before? If not, I hope this won't be the last time. And for all you regulars, just send you hugs and kisses. I was looking through, I look at a lot of recipes and boy, they had, uh, this book had two or three pages of scones. I was just thinking, I wish I had a scone with that. It's a really British thing, you know. Ever tell you my mom was born in England? And I think that's why I love tea, scones, that kind of thing. And um, it would be so great if we could all sit down together and have that kind of a moment. But this is the best we can do now. So I just want you to know you're so welcome. Just come right on in. And I have a good friend with me today. She's been on the program before. Her name is uh, Gail Ross. And perhaps you've seen her on television. She has a show called Testimonies of Triumph. And I've said many, many times, nothing better on Christian TV than a good testimony. Just, just the best. She's written a couple of books. Uh, we'll be talking about this one today. This is her second book, From Glimpses to Power. Excellent book. I can certainly highly recommend it. And I'm glad to have Gail back. I'm going to join Stephanie for a recipe that I, I can't talk about it now. We'll just have to demonstrate it. But have you ever had a pie crust and they put a layer of cashews on it and it's actually a quiche? Whoever thought of that one, I'd like to meet them. But uh, we're going to try and see if it's really good. But before I join her, I really uh, want to, one more time at least, offer you the book by David and Kathy Walker. They got the idea one day, let's put together a book that really describes Israel and the Middle East so that Christians uh, who maybe get a little confused, like this one, uh, can really make it plain because, you know, that Middle East is in the news every single day. I was thinking one day, you know, when I was a kid in uh, Sunday school, I heard about Israel, I heard about Bethlehem, I heard about Palestine, and at that time it seemed like they were way, way far away, but no more. They're in our family rooms every single evening on the news, so this will uh, certainly uh, give you the education you need. It's simple, you can understand it, and for that gift of $23, includes your shipping and handling, we are going to uh, send it to you, and a lot of people have ordered that. That's the reason I keep offering it, so keep ordering it, and uh, we'll keep sending it to you. And now I'm over here. Looks like uh, Sister Stephanie is sauteing a bunch of zucchini. Zucchini. I've got zucchini. I've got a little butter. i got a little garlic. I'm going to put salt, pepper, and dill weed in here. Um, and this up. is called a tasty zucchini quiche, quiche. And, but it is truly different. Now, would you like to um, crack the eggs and okay. beat them up? And then you just kind of beat them? Yeah, I don't know who thought of putting the cashews in here, but it sounds pretty I, interesting. I'm really interested to taste You know, I wondered, what was she thinking? Again, a woman who had, <laughs> I have cashews, I have zucchini, I have cheese. What can I make? Yeah, what can I make? Yeah. I just love a clock. Now, what was she doing? Was mm -hmm. she in the cooking sherry a little bit, maybe? Maybe. Something like that. Okay. If so. I live... Ten lives, I wouldn't think of putting cashews in Me it. Me neither. So we have a pie uh, shell that we already baked up and let mm -hmm. cool. We That's a, a deep dish, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Deep dish pie and shell. And then we have a cup of um, cashews that we're going to put in the bottom here. That is so odd. Interesting. I am so interested to taste this. And then I'm going to take my zucchini that I've um, sauteed. Now, apparently, that wouldn't cook good enough in the... I don't think it could Quiche. cook long enough because of the pie crust. You're not going to be able to cook it forever, and the, and the zucchini would so take a So that's why they have you do it ahead of time and season it ahead yeah. of time. I can't get too much zucchini, to be honest with you. This I'm is really, really always good. Uh-oh. Oh, got a jumper. Uh-oh. Let me get it before you step on it. Okay, there's that. It's smelling really good, I can tell you that. Yeah, we are going to um, put the cheese in. We have... Monterey Jack cheese that's all cubed, they cubed up. It. Why couldn't you just put the shredded on there? Oh, you could. I don't know why they called for cubed. I thought there maybe there was a reason or I would just get the shredded. We just follow directions around here. We try. We yeah. 
Okay, and then you take your three eggs that you beat this up. This is a, still a little bit hot. Take the three eggs that you beat up and we're just gonna pour it right over slowly so it doesn't go toppling off the sides. And then you just bake it for 45 minutes. You at really need a deep dish for it too. Yeah. Look how delicious that looks. Oh. And because it has zucchini, it's healthy, right? <laughs> I'm going with the yeah, zucchini nothing is too healthy. like a lot it of cheese. That has cheese, eggs, and a pie crust. I never have really wanted to look at the calorie count on quiche. Yeah, no, that would ruin it. All right. And then you just throw it in the oven. So let's do it. Uh -huh. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. Gotta taste those cashews. <gasps> That's very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, quiche. That, look at that. That's nice. Quiche is just um, perfect for a brunch. Oh, yeah. Maybe a little fruit cup by it, and that's all you need. I want to meet. I want to meet the sure person. Make sure you get those cashews. Yeah, in there. I want to meet the person who came up with the cashews. Please, no close-ups, Preston. Yeah, ready? Here we mm. go. Oh no. mm, my goodness. Mmm. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? It's hot. Mmm. Mm hmm I love it. I love it. If you want something different. Mm. Don't you like to, you know, if you have some girlfriends over for brunch or something, surprise them. Yeah, this would this be a will, great surprise. Oh, I love that. That is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Different. If you want the recipe, you can have it. Information's coming up on your screen. Out of 10 points, I give it about a 15. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I really I really did it's like really that. really good. Burgers. Yeah. Oh, now, stay around. If you haven't met Gail Ross, you're going to love her. going to meet her right now. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. I am delighted to have Gail Ross back. You cooked for me last time. <laughs> I did. You didn't invite me back to cook again this time. <laughs> Let's see. Did it have two ingredients or three? It had three. Mm -hmm. It had 7-Up well. peaches and cake mix. Mm -hmm. And Seven up and a cake mix, and, and you know, amazingly, it tasted pretty good. It did taste good. It, <laughs> it really, was fun. It really did. But um, that proves that you can cook. Just want to give you a little rest Thank this you. time. Thank you. Gail is the producer and host of Testimonies of Triumph, and uh, she's an author and a speaker. And I'm just delighted to have her back. Um, she has a grandson with autism and we talked about that on one program. How is Eric? Eric is doing very well. He's progressing. We're seeing a lot of really good signs. God is faithful. It has drawn our family so close to God. You know, sometimes when there is a, a child that has special needs that mm -hmm. can pull a family apart, but I see my son and daughter-in-law just growing so close to God. So it will do one or the other. It will do one or the other. It's not going to stay the same. One or the other. Um, I know in a conversation we didn't have on the air, but maybe you could explain a little bit the what an autistic child hears. Maybe it's three or four times the volume of what you or I would hear. That well, everything just processed different. Everything is processed different. Uh, Eric actually is, has just been fitted for hearing aids. Uh, they said that they, in testing him, they weren't really able to determine what he was hearing. Was he hearing screeching noises? Was it sounding like a lot of static coming through for him? Uh, they actually told us he would never speak, but he does. He has language. We prayed through that, and God has been faithful. But he was just fitted for hearing aids. And here's kind of a cute story. It's interesting you brought this up. Mm -hmm. Um, he was making all these faces while they were fitting him and they were putting them in and as soon as they moved away his face lit up and he said mama I love to hear so we were so blessed that God was in that and Eric is hearing very well now so good I, things yeah I would just like to highlight too <clears throat> what these parents I've heard uh, Pastor Rod Parsley yes. talk about uh, I mean, it's 24 hours a day. It's 24-7. Uh -huh. 
And if you've got someone in your church like this or anyone you know, see what you can do to give Help them a little them. lift. Babysit for mom, you know, uh -huh. do something. Yeah. It's a hard, it's a very hard mm -hmm. life, and it is 24-7. And it's a plague. It's one out of how many now? Well, it's about one out of every 88 boys now mm -hmm. has been that's, diagnosed with that's autism. A high and until we percentage. find out that is high, mm -hmm. well, what will we do with these generations? Mm -hmm. You know, 20 years from now, where will these children be? Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to talk to you about this book. And uh, let's, let's uh, show it, Preston. It's um, your second book, From Glimpses to Power. And please note the website on the screen as, as we talk to it. Now, your first book was uh, From Glimpses to From Glory. Glimpses to Glory. Where where'd this idea come from? That's a great question, mm -hmm. Arthelene. We went to Israel a year ago. And when we walked through Israel and Jerusalem and Canaan and sailed on the Sea of Galilee and the Bible became so alive to me mm -hmm. and the one thing that I kept feeling the Lord saying is that the body of Christ is living so far below the power the authority the anointing mm -hmm. that has been given to us and so when I came home I really felt like there was a book that I needed to write it down so the first one from glimpses to glory but the Lord told me there was a series here so the second one was Glimpses to Power, which I just mm -hmm. completed, and I so appreciated your endorsement. The third one is going to be from Glimpses to Hope, because there's people out there, like my little family, that needed hope to know that God's here. He's in mm -hmm. this. Whatever your situation is, God's there. Yeah, he's, gone, he's still on his throne. He's still on his throne. He hasn't gone anywhere. Now, this book could, could be used in so many ways, but to me, it just opened up the vast variety of the way God wants to help us so by His power. So we'll go through some of them. Okay. You break it down to 12 uh, chapters, and you talk about the first one, fire, which uh, surprised me a little bit. The power of fire. I, I think that is so interesting in the book of Kings, Elijah, he does, the, the, cho the children of Israel are following. They're trying to concurrently worship God and the prophets of Baal. Uh, they're trying to worship Baal, so he do, has a little uh, showdown here. And what he says is that you go ahead and try to call down your false gods and see if they can start a fire here mm -hmm. on this altar. The interesting part was the first, nothing happened. You, you can't sure. call fire down There's a, a, no. from a false god, right? And what they were doing was worshiping these false gods. So what Elijah says is, now, now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. And he repairs the altar of the Lord that had been broken down before he could call down fire. And what I saw on that was there are many of us that are trying to worship God and worship other gods at the same time. We can't worship mm -hmm. the creator of heaven and earth and worship or have idolatry mm -hmm. for small g gods, mm -hmm. whatever they are. The first thing he did was repair the altar of the heart, or the altar of, of the Lord. And so I mentioned, mm -hmm. are there, is there a place on your heart where an altar needs to be repaired? Mm -hmm. But you need to just repair that so you can call down the fire, the power of God mm -hmm. for what you need, finances, health, whatever mm -hmm. you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, of course, the power of the word. And we, mm -hmm. we deprive ourselves from that. Power of the word. Well, I talked about the fact that I had a severe fall and I had a severe head injury. In fact, my diagnosis was brain damage consistent with seizure disorder. And you know, the doctors were telling me one bad report after another and my husband and I got to the point where we decided we were no longer going to repeat what the doctors had to say. And we thank God for doctors. God uses doctors. Sure. But what did the Word of God say? The Word of God said that by every stripe on Jesus' back I was healed, that He sent His Word and healed me and delivered me from destruction. I had to focus on God's Word to, to achieve this healing. And it was interesting because the last time I saw the neurologist, he said to my husband, she has a long road ahead of her, a long road. Well, two weeks later, I was healed. It was almost just a spontaneous healing because we stood on the Word of God. Yes, and a lot of times we make things of this importance into a cliché. 
Right. Well, whose report are you going to believe? And you know, it's just kind of a lighthearted. It's when you truly apply it, when it becomes absolutely real to you, that you are truly, for your situation, going to agree and receive the report of the Lord. That's right. And I will tell you that when you experience God in that way, that was such a good thing that you just said. We can't have faith in our faith. Our faith is in God. Our faith is in God's Word. Mm -hmm. Our faith is in what the Holy Spirit wrote. And that is that we are just as healed as we are saved. And we have to get a hold of that. I think you said something pretty important there, that our faith is not in our faith. That's right. It's in Him. Yeah. It has to be real. Okay. Um, the walls. Is that... And that, is that power in building them up or tearing them down? Well, you know, I think I, I, I was teaching on a subject called Pearl Girls. So I did a little bit of a study on pearls. And actually, people say that sand gets into the shell of a pearl, and so a pearl starts secreting this substance called nacre to protect itself. Mm -hmm. But it's worse than that. It's an intruder that comes in to the body of the shell, a parasite. And you know, all of us have intruders that come into our life. They come in through sickness, they come in through betrayal, whatever. Intruders come into our lives. And, but the pearl secretes the snaker, but God gives us his love and his mercy. And sometimes what we do is we'll build a wall around our heart and we won't let God in. But you know, we've walled in that intruder when we've done that. And so I think it's important that we let those walls down and let God come in and bring that Holy Ghost healing and heal us. It's just a matter mm. of turning to Him. Yes, but some people have been so hurt and so damaged, it's hard for them to take on that concept. Well, you know, I wouldn't be able to say it if I hadn't lived it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I went through was my mother committed suicide when I was 20 years old and she was only 43. And Arthelene, I can remember the pain so vivid yeah. that I, I remember thinking, I might die from this pain. Mm -hmm. and, and I wasn't exaggerating. My heart was so broken, I thought, I know how a person can die of a broken heart because mm -hmm. I, I cried out to God, mm -hmm. I think this is killing me. I could not deal with the pain. But he, he, when you invite him to come into your life, he's there. Mm -hmm. He's not a far off God. He's right here. So I can speak from my own life that, yes, I went through a terrible pain, day, dark day after dark day, but the more I responded to him, the more I called out to him, he brings that healing. And it is a healing. Yeah. And it's so sad that so many people, even Christians, they stay stuck. They stay stuck there. Uh, you know, like you, I... I went through a period where I cried so much, I didn't know the human body had that many tears. Well, you know, exactly. Exactly. I was it's, shocked sometimes I'd wake up and, then, and I'd be alive. I, it, that's it, exactly. I know exactly what you're saying. But, you know, these are destiny thieves that come into our lives because God has a plan mm -hmm. and a purpose for every one of us. And these destiny thieves are there to derail us. And I think if we can really grasp that there is a divine purpose for our lives, we can start to turn that pain and all that hurt into that purpose, and it keeps us going, keeps and us this, on track. And the scripture says that he comforts us. Yes. In all of these things. Why? So we can in turn comfort, comfort. others. That's right. If you just tuned in, I'm talking to Gail Ross, and this is her newest book. Let's put it back up there so they can see it, Preston, uh, From Glimpses to Power. And we're not going to have time to go through all of these chapters, but I hope just to give you enough to just kind of pique your interest. And from that website, you can uh, find this book. I just think there's so much good material in this um, that will just move to mature your Christian life a little bit. I, I know the Lord wants us to grow up in Him. That's right. uh, you know the sorrow you have with Eric mm -hmm. because it's not that point of maturity right now where he should be you wonder how God feels when he looks down at his children and they've never moved any any place from when they just were first born again well yeah. and that's such a good point and that's why I write about the the power of fire Elijah finally got to the people to the point where he said to the people how long are you going to halt and limp between two opinions mm -hmm. either we believe God's word all of it mm -hmm. 
or we don't. Right. It isn't pick and choose. Nope. And it isn't today I have faith, but something happens tomorrow, so I lose my faith. It's trusting in a mm -hmm. faithful God. He promises. The promises are all yes and amen. That's what, that's what it says. Okay, we've got just a couple minutes, uh, so you're going to have to get the book <laughs> in order to uh, get all of this. Uh, the walls, uh, the power of walls, the power of wells. Oh, that one. You got to read that one. Uh, the power of freedom, the power of love, power of visions, power of joy, power of seasons, the power of praise. I got a good one on that, but we don't have time. And the power of hope. I think people underestimate. I heard Dwight Thompson say once, you know, that you can live three days without water, you can live 40 days without food, but you can't live two minutes without hope. How do you live without hope? And um, I had a brother who passed away and he didn't take his life or anything, but he lost hope a long mm. time before. It is the saddest thing to watch. It is, it is, but he is the God of hope. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it, there's always hope with With, with God. the Lord. There mm -hmm. is. You know, and no matter how the situation turns out, we, you and I have talked about this once before, I don't know if you remember, we are more than conquerors mm -hmm. through a life in Christ. Mm -hmm. And God always has something better for us. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know mm -hmm. the thoughts and plans I have for you to give you a future and a hope, not for evil, future and a hope. Mm -hmm. He has a good life plan for us. Absolutely. We've got one minute left. Your last one is the power of the cross. And I think if there's anything that disturbs me today is that in many churches you don't hear the cross mention, and that's the center of our theology. It is. I think that the church as a whole, that's such a good point you're making, the church as a whole needs a fresh revelation mm -hmm. of the cross mm -hmm. and all that was accomplished on mm -hmm. it. It wasn't too long ago, I was I had some kind of a CD in my car, the player, and uh, it came on with Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. Mm. I hadn't heard that song in years. I can't tell you, uh, it just bubbled up in my life. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory. Absolutely, ever. absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, and if you go to her website, you'll find out when her program is on and where. It's called Testimonies of Triumph. Right. And I hope you will check it out. And we are out of time, but stick with me. I have just a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Okay, friends, I want to again offer you the book on Israel and the Middle East by David and Kathy Walker. Uh, you keep ordering it, so that's why I keep offering it to you. And uh, when you cease to order it, I will cease to offer it. But I think it is a valuable book for any Christian, and you want to know what's going on, okay? Uh, if you write to me, if you want to get it that way, it's a gift of $23, Homekeepers Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And... Uh, if you want to order by credit card, it's 1-800-229-0059. And thank you very much for anything you can do to support the program. You know, as this program is being taped, there are stories in the news that should cause every Christian heart to tremble. While I now speak to you, the fate of abortionist Kermit Gosnell is in the hands of American jurors. He's the one who practiced the most brutal infanticide on babies who survived abortion and now faces several murder charges. As I mentioned on an earlier program, for the most part, the American press has ignored this story because of their love for abortion. They would never want to put so-called pro-choice in a bad light. Also, just yesterday, as I make this program, Jason Collins, a player for the Washington Wizards, announced that he is gay. I don't know when I've heard such gushing. President Obama actually called to congratulate him. Former President Clinton, his wife and daughter, extolled his courage. Somehow when I think of the word courage, this story does not fit the definition. Perhaps you'll remember also that our president made a personal phone call to activist Sandra Fluck to encourage her for the stand she had taken that the federal government be required to pay for contraception for her and other women's fornication and promiscuity. 
Such a blatant disregard for God and his commandments should break the heart of every Bible-believing Christian in this nation. The penalty America will pay for such godlessness will be a cost beyond comprehension. And sadly, our children and grandchildren will pick up the tab. It's time to revisit the prayer that Pastor Joe Wright prayed for the opening of the Kansas House of Representatives back in 1996. He prayed, Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask your forgiveness and to seek your direction and guidance. We know your word says, woe to those who call evil good, but that is exactly what we've done. We've lost our spiritual equilibrium and reversed our values. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. We have rewarded laziness and called it welfare. We've killed our unborn and called it choice. We've shot abortionists and called it justifiable. We've neglected to discipline our children and called it building self-esteem. We've abused power and called it politics. We've coveted our neighbor's possessions and called it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom of expression. We've ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search us, O oh God, and know our hearts today and cleanse us from sin. Set us free. You know, some of the legislators were so offended they walked out on Pastor Wright. Would you? Personally, I would have given him a standing ovation. Think about it, please, and remember, friend, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.